Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 20th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Didier is on a roll in analyzing PDF streams. PDF streams, again, are the components of a PDF file, and uh, some of these components may be JPEGs. So Didier is using his PDF parser.py tool to produce JSON output. And the great thing about having that tool now produce JSON output is that other tools that Didier has published can be used in order to then further process that output. In this particular case, he uses filemagic.py to figure out which ones of these PDF streams are JPEGs, then saves these JPEGs into separate files, creates hashes in order to avoid duplicates, and well, a Basically, with a little command line, a couple of pipes, you get all the JPEGs that are embedded in this particular PDF file. Certainly interesting if you try to assess a suspect a PDF uh, quickly, but of course, uh, the same technique can also be applied to other file types, not just to JPEG images. And then we have yet another interesting and also somewhat troubling blog post from Watchtower. Watchtower did release a proof of concept exploit for a vulnerability in QNAP QTS. The vulnerability has been reported to QNAP back in January, but as of uh, writing of their blog post has not been patched yet. It's a buffer overflow vulnerability, so exploitation isn't terribly straightforward, but uh, Watchtower does offer a proof of concept exploit that essentially allows you to execute arbitrary shell commands and to demonstrate how it could be used uh, to add a user, allow that user to log in via SSH, and they also make that user an administrator. There is a couple caveats here for this particular vulnerability that make it not quite that serious. First of all, the vulnerability is in a feature that allows you to share files with other users. In order for this vulnerability to be exploited, an attacker does have to have access to one of the URLs being used to share a file. Secondly, the proof of concept exploit was developed on a system with address space randomization disabled. The production firmware coming with QNAP devices does have it enabled, which of course makes exploiting buffer overflows a little bit more difficult, but there are well-known techniques to bypass address space layout randomization. So probably still quite possible for a somewhat skilled attacker to rewrite that exploit and enable it even with the standard stock firmware. Probably the best thing to do right now is to not share files using the URL feature. It's essentially kind of like what Dropbox and such does. You can share a file on your QNAP device with a random user who does not have an account on the system. And that's sort of you know, why the exploit works without authentication by sharing a secret URL. And that's sort of where then the buffer overflow may happen. As part of the blog post, uh, Watchtower is also listing other vulnerabilities that they have reported to QNAP. Some of them have already been fixed, but others are still waiting for a fix. So certainly sort of interesting times here if you're using a QNAP device. QNAP has historically been pretty good about uh, delivering patches, but the patching device itself I know from my own experience, isn't always that terribly straightforward in particular if a bunch of other systems that you're running are relying on that QNAP device. And talking about patches, uh, Microsoft uh, released a note that the May 2024 update may fail on Windows 2019 server systems. This apparently is more likely going to happen if you don't have the English United States language pack installed. So maybe a quick fix is just to install it. Now, the problem here is just that the installation fails. The system itself does not to be affected in 
any further away. Uh, maybe also if you're running into this error, uh, wait for an updated uh, patch. Could also affect uh, Windows 10 version 18.09 and Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 2019. Apparently, the Windows version for Home and Pro has reached end of servicing, so you shouldn't really run that anyway. And uh, yet, yeah, that uh, reached end of servicing back in 2020, according uh, to Microsoft. And since this morning that there are a number of uh, dealing vulnerabilities uh, that are being exploited, uh, those vulnerabilities are not always patchable. It depends uh, on the router you're having, but uh, some of your affected routers here are no longer receiving updates. So take them out behind the house and take them out of their misery. And then we have another proof of concept that's worthwhile pointing out. Ivanti's enterprise mobility management platform has had a patch uh, lately that fixes uh, vulnerability CVE 2024-22026. Well, a proof of concept has been published for this vulnerability now. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.